I get asked all the time about some alternative areas to live when you're thinking about relocating to the Tampa market. And St. Pete is one of my favorite options. So in this video, I am going to talk to you about the pros and cons of living in St. Pete. So let's get to it. I'm Emily. I'm a licensed real estate agent here in the state of Florida and I live in the Tampa St. Pete area and this channel is dedicated to all things living, working, and playing in the Tampa St. Pete area as well as Clearwater and the surrounding beaches. So if that resonates with you, I would really love it if you would hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so that you can be notified as soon as my videos drop. I try to do them weekly. Also, if you have any real estate related questions, I can't help you if you don't reach out to me. All of my links are below. You can text me or you can email me. Also, if you want a little bit more one-on-one -on -one with me, you can click my calendar link below and we can have a 30-minute phone call or Zoom where we can discuss your personal real estate needs. And today, we are going to be talking about the pros and the cons of living in St. Petersburg, Florida. So before we jump into the pros and cons of St. Pete, let me give you just a little bit of history. So St. Pete was discovered in 1875 and it's rich with our Florida history. And you can see that when you drive along some of our major streets in St. Pete and they still have those cobblestone streets and those old craftsman homes, if I can get that out. And uh, St. Pete has been ranked 38 uh, out of 228 of the best cities to live in. Also, the median income is right there around that 56K. Um, na national average, by the way, is 62K. So it is still one of the most affordable cities to live in and you're just minutes from the beach. And the median house price right now in the St. Pete area is sitting right there at that 348,000 for a 32. Now, I did a little bit more research before I started filming and I was finding numbers all over the map. The problem is you could have a 32 that needs some renovations that's in the 250 to 350K, but next door you could be sitting next to a million dollar renovated home. So it kind of skews our market a little bit. You have to do your own research, as I've said many times in my other videos, and working with a really knowledgeable real estate agent can also help you understand the market. I highly recommend doing a market report in a couple of months out and start to get a feel for the market before you start to dive in to uh, the housing market before you relocate. So just a cute few little tips, little realtor tips for you. And I pulled up some data from the Greater Tampa Bay Realtor site that I wanted to share with you. These are real numbers from the MLS. So when you're looking at the median sale price, you're gonna see right now from September of 2021, the median sale price was in that 348 range. Well, last year it was 282. So obviously there's a 23% increase. Not to mention, you can see that the average sale price right now is in that 417K and it was 349. So we're having significant jumps. And if you continue to scroll down, notice the closing sales right now for 2021 towards that July, August, September month, they kind of started creeping down. Then the median sales price was increasing as well as our inventory dipped and then it's now leveling out. That is all about supply and demand, which is not helping the increase in the average home sale price right now. So I would definitely say that is a con. So doing your research, highly recommend it. You need to know what your budget is. I'm working with a client right now, a young first time buyer. We're getting prepared, helping her with her credit score, getting her proper down payment ready, looking at to see if there's any programs available to her in this market and getting a strategy to make her a very attractive buyer. But as we wait, we're seeing prices increase and inventory dropping. So we have to play with that a little bit. But I do believe in the right time and space, the house for her is going to be waiting for her. Same thing as you. My advice is always do your homework. If you're watching this video, this is one step. 
The second step is you have to get an advocate, a real estate agent in the market that understands what's going on and that also knows how to negotiate a proper deal for you. It's super important. So now that we've gotten some of those stats out of the way, some of that basic housing market information that changes all the time, by the way, let's really dive into the pros and cons of actually living in St. Petersburg. And my first pro is affordability. We are 29% above the national average and 7% above the Florida average. So St. Petersburg is still really a wonderful place to consider when affordability is high on your list. Now in some other videos, I talked about gas prices being below $3. Well, I have to correct myself now. I am noticing gas prices slowly creeping up into that $3 and $3.30 range. Unfortunately, the way that our world is going right now, there is some inflation that we're all gonna feel. I have a feeling it's gonna level out here soon, Again, I don't have my crystal ball. Somebody can mail me a crystal ball and I'll, I'll be glad to read it for you. But for right now, I think St. Pete is still hitting right there at the below the national average. One of the cons you might wanna factor in with St. Petersburg is the housing market being all over the place. Not to mention the neighborhoods are all over the place. You can be, you have to really determine which neighborhoods are gonna work best for you. That's why I tell people to make sure you drive around a lot. I can't really determine that for you, but I, I can tell you, and it's public knowledge, that St. Petersburg has a C rating when it comes to crime. Now, does that mean all of St. Pete has high crime? No, it's like any other area. You're gonna have crime in spots. It's just finding those areas out and do, again, doing your research. Also, rental rates are going up astronomically. So it is a good time to buy so that you can start building some equity, but you have to consider that as well if you're not ready to buy, but you wanna to get to a city or you have to relocate because of work. So do your due diligence, talk to your real estate agent and get a really clear picture on different areas, what they offer. And I'm gonna talk about some of them here, but make sure you know what you're getting into. St. Pete is definitely more of a city vibe than Tampa, if we're gonna compare the two. And the houses are very different. So that's also something to consider. A pro that I, it's a pro to me, it might be a pro to you, so I'm gonna keep it on the pro side, is that St. Pete is a green city. I didn't even know that. It, they really have set aside a lot of money and time to create more of a you know, clean living, spending money on uh, water conservation and preserving the estuaries and new recycling programs. Things that I think Tampa could take a note from. And if that's important to you, it's something to consider. And when you drive around St. Pete, you, you do get a feel for that. A lot of recycled materials are used in building and all of the you know community gardens. It really adds to the culture that's really cool about St. Pete. So this one could be a pro or could be a con, depending on where you land. But St. Petersburg is very liberal. We tend to be a conservative state, but St. Pete, is very, very liberal, let me just say that. So as far as culture and the arts and um, a really fun happening nightlife and the diversity, uh, if that's your thing, keep that in mind. If it's not your thing, you need to keep that in mind because with that, you're going to see lots of the movements of the time, you know, flags flying, that sort of thing. If you don't want that in your neighborhood, and you don't wanna be in a neighborhood like that, you need to consider that. Um, also, you need to consider there is a lot of tourism in St. Pete, and there are a lot of retirees. So you might have liberals on one side, the liberal millennials on one side, but then you're gonna have the snowbirds and the retirees on the other side. And the snowbirds, you know, can go either way, depending on uh, what side of the fence they land on. I'm trying to be politically correct here <laughs> so that I don't, you know, step on anybody's toes. But I think that it's important to note that the, the diversity, the culture is that that maybe compares to a Seattle or of, a, um, of Oregon uh, in general or a New York per se. We are, it's still a little city. So it has a really cool downtown uh, vibe but it's not huge. So there tends to be a lot of people in the summertime, a lot of tourists. As soon as that snow hits though up north, that's what we call them the snowbirds. The snow hits up north, people are coming down and people usually have their second home or their vacation home here. 
And because of all of the uh, high rises that have been going up in St. Pete, you see a lot more of those snowbirds or people coming down, especially those millennials that can afford a second home and they come down here and they work out of their little condo overlooking, you know, the ocean. Who wouldn't want that? But going back to it being very liberal, you do have to consider whether that's going to work for you, your lifestyle, your family environment, and what you want in your daily life. So put that on either side of the fence, wherever that lands for you, but I just wanted to make a note of that for you. Now, another obvious pro to most people of St. Pete living is that it's, it's walkability. It's got a high walkability rating, like 90%. So if that appeals to you, St. Pete is definitely a city to consider, especially if you're someone like me who likes to walk out your front door and jump on your bike and pedal down to your local coffee shop and that barista's already got your coffee ready. I love that feeling. Not to mention great food. Some of the best food in the Tampa St. Pete area, we call either other side of the bridge, uh, is in St. Pete. Great food, again, Lots of fun. If you want to go dancing or go to a rooftop bar, St. Pete is where it's at. St. Pete does not lack for things to do either. If you're looking to entertain small children or you're just looking to entertain yourself, we've got all sorts of parks, all sorts of museums. And again, you can take the kids on a bike ride or a stroller ride and a lot of outdoor activities, especially in these days that seems to be high on a lot of people's lists. So if that appeals to you, I think that should go on the pro side. It's on my pro side. Now, one of the cons, it could be a con, I it's on several people's cons list of living in St. Pete, is that there are a ton of retirees. There are a ton of assisted living facilities. So sadly, sometimes those are county run and you'll see people on the side of the street, on the corner in their wheelchairs, wheeling down the street to that little coffee shop, you know, on their own. Uh, and so again, if that's not your, your thing, I had a client point that out to me when we were looking at houses and I was like, eh, yeah, something you have to take into consideration. A pro that I almost forgot to mention because now it's becoming something I talk about in almost every one of my videos, sports. Okay, but specifically the Tampa Bay Rays. The Rays Stadium is actually nestled right in the heart of St. Pete, right along 275 and just above 175. And if you're looking for something fun to do, right outside of the stadium, down on Central Avenue a little bit, are all these wonderful food trucks and restaurants and eclectic stores and lots of graffiti art. And it's a ton of walkability and you can ride your bike around. So that's a pro, but on the con side, Ray's Stadium gets really packed. Lots of traffic, lots of visitors. So traffic can be kind of a hit or miss in St. Pete anyway. Luckily, 275 attaches St. Pete to Tampa. That's the main thoroughfare and it's pretty wide. Depending on the time of day, it then starts to bottleneck, especially when you get to the bridge. So traffic is also a con you have to take into consideration when it comes to sporting events or just even getting off of work or any special event that's happening anywhere near that area. Just keep that in mind. Fun fact number one, Florida has the longest coastline anywhere in the United States of 825 mile stretch of beaches. Okay, fun fact number two, did you know that Florida has the most golf courses out of all the states in the US? Shocker, I know. I thought that was quite interesting. Fun fact number three, this one you might have known, but 80% of all the fruit grown in the United States comes from Florida. Just a little tidbit. Did you know there are no fossils found in Florida? Because during that time, we were underwater. Sad for us, no fossils. Fun factoid for you, my favorite actually. Florida has over 9,200 miles of hiking and biking trails. 9,200 miles. I don't even know if I can process that. Hmm. Well guys, I think that about covers it for the pros and cons of St. Petersburg, Florida, at least for this installment. I'm gonna start adding some more videos about St. Petersburg. I'm gonna do a vlog tour here really soon. And some of my most favorite things to do while you're in St. Pete because there's just too much to talk about on one video. 
And of course, if you have your own pros and cons of St. Petersburg, I'd love to hear it. And I think the audience would as well. So make sure you comment below. As always, don't forget to reach out to me if you're interested in getting more information on the housing market in Florida or how I can be your resource if you're looking to relocate. You can reach out to me by texting me or emailing me below. And as always, you can jump on my calendar and we can talk more privately about your real estate needs and goals. I really would love to help you. I can't help you if you don't connect with me. So reach out. I promise I'll get back to you. And as always, I would really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so that you can know and get notified when my new videos are dropping weekly. And thanks again, guys, for coming out. I'm looking forward to talking to you again. Have a great one. Be kind to one another. Bye.